Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather rejoicing, always rejoicing in God's love for us. No matter where we are in the world, no matter what's happening in our life, we can rejoice in God's love for us. But that also means we become aware of the areas of our life that need healing. Or forgiveness. And those are also gifts that in this Eucharist we pray for, we ask God's blessing for. Lord God, you sent your Son to teach us how to love and how to serve. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your Son came to bind up wounds to forgive sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came to gather all the nations, all the peoples of the world into the peace of his kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Now let us rejoice and give God glory. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, who do his commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you may be hidden on the day of the wrath of the Lord. For I will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord, those who are left in Israel. They shall do no wrong and utter no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouth a, de a deceitful tongue. For they shall pasture and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Come, Lord, and save us. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and save us. us. It is the Lord who preserves fidelity forever, who does justice to those who are oppressed. It is he who gives bread to the hungry, the Lord who sets prisoners free. 
Come, Lord, and save us. It is the Lord who opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord who raises up those who are bowed down. It is the Lord who loves the just, the Lord who protects the stranger. Come, Lord, and save us. The Lord upholds the orphan and the widow, but thwarts the path of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever, the God of Zion, from age to age. Come, Come Lord, Lord, and and save save us. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your call, brethren. Not many of you were wise according to the flesh. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no flesh might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus whom God made our wisdom, our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, the disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's see if you can finish the sentence. I will be happy when. There must be a million possible endings to that sentence. I will be happy when. I'll be happy when I fall in love and get married. I'll be happy when I can buy a new car. I'll be happy when I get promoted. I'll be happy when I retire. So, are you happy? When will you be happy? What will it take? Jesus has some wisdom on this subject. And his wisdom might not make much sense to us. Because what he had to say seems backwards, upside down. Because Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. The first thing that Jesus does is 
change our vocabulary. He doesn't talk about happiness, although some versions of the Bible use the word happy instead of the word blessed. I think blessed is probably a better word because of the way we tend to use happiness. Happiness is having that long summer holiday or getting promoted or getting a new car. But Jesus has something different in mind, something that goes deeper, something that seems strange when we first hear it. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Well, you can see what I mean by upside down. These are not the rules that you and I know, and probably not the rules that we live by. The ones that we know are there, are blessed are the rich, because they can buy what they want. Blessed are the strong, because they can take what they want. Blessed are the winners, for it's no fun to be a loser. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst at the best restaurants, because they will be pampered and indulged and filled. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. The Greek word that is translated poor means abject poverty. True poverty is a cruel thing. It breaks down people. They suffer. They are confronted daily with their own helplessness. And they know that the difference that even a small little act of mercy can make. They watch eagerly for a gesture or a glance that might promise help. Next time you're at a, the traffic light, there are people begging. Watch them. See what it is they are looking for. They long for a, a bit of kindness. They crave dignity. Standing before God, the poor in spirit are just like that. They bring nothing in their hands that God needs. There's nothing in their hearts that compels God to accept them. They come in their poverty hoping for some kind of sustenance. They come in their brokenness, hoping to be mended. They come in their sin, hoping to be forgiven. They come in grief, hoping to be comforted. They don't come bargaining with God because they've got nothing to offer. And it's precisely their humility, their openness, that makes them fertile soil to receive whatever gift or blessing that God wants them to receive. That's why Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who come to God on their knees. Well, that's not our preferred mode of travel on our knees. We would rather be in control. We prefer to pay for what we get. We'd rather not be in anybody's debt. But Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit. And we fight very hard not to be poor in spirit. We try to get the best grades we can, so we can get the best job we can. We work as hard as we can and do the best that we can. And we try desperately to be in control of every aspect of our lives. And all of these efforts leave us feeling exhausted because ultimately we are doomed to failure. We're exhausted in part because we are not poor in spirit. 
we are proud and we are desperate to be in control, desperate to do it our way. And so we spend so much time on unimportant things. We work long hours to buy things that we don't need, to impress people that we don't like. Why do we do it? The meaning of this beatitude and all of the beatitudes is that God blesses us when we come to God with empty hands, ready to receive whatever blessing God chooses to give us, ready to follow, to walk whatever path God chooses for us. The promise is this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice that Jesus does not say, theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. He says, now, theirs is the kingdom of heaven now. We don't have to wait for the kingdom. Jesus says it has come near. We can enter it now on our knees in humility with love. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now humbly take refuge in the name of the Lord as we offer him our prayers and petitions. That Jesus, the wisdom of God, will enlighten the church for proclaiming the reign of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the righteousness of God, will guide world leaders into the ways of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the consolation of God, will raise up the needy by our care for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the sanctification of God, will make us holy and blessed in doing God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the salvation of God, will welcome the dead into his kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis that educators may be credible witnesses, teaching fraternity rather than competition, and helping the youngest and most vulnerable above all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever faithful God, we seek you in the midst of one another and in the heart of our world. As we call upon your name in these prayers, answer them for the sake of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Father, may we live as water and wine, where we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased with this gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good before God's holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may help us on our journey of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. To lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your word through whom you made all things. Whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the source of all that is good and holy in the world. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you, eat of it. This is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Once more, giving you thanks and praise, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope, with Potitlachale, our bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. So, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we! who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I may say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.